On this fantastic Friday, Tri-State Summer Madness afforded us our first look at a much-touted West Hancock crew led by Lewis Siegfried who wasted little time in impressing. In fact, in Lewis's case, right from the opening tip, Clark County trying to counter, they would do so on the offensive glass courtesy of returning big man Harrison Parker who fights for the loose ball, takes it away, and gets his two. West Hancock will answer that offense with a barrage of offense. Starts with Gavin Grothaus from the outside, knocking down a triple. Then check out the passing as it's Grothaus to Siegfried inside to the very athletic Mr. Nolan Gooding for two of his own accord. And then a little big man presence for the Titans, which is a game changer for the program. Check out Cooper Knowles ending the first half with a big follow dunk. He's not done yet. He would start the second half in a lot of the same manner with a dunk of his own in this one. Unfortunately for the Titans, after building as much as a 13-point lead, their offense would go ice cold and Clark County would get a little bit back into this thing. But the Titan bench mob would pick up the slack late and help West Hancock close out a 41-33 victory. Across the river at the right field house, it was Fort Madison already with one win on the day and building a nice first half lead at the expense of Macomb thanks to Nolan Guzman's blonde ambition tour with the larceny and the layup, but the Bombers claw their way back into this one. Isaac Leinbach controls the loose ball, makes the nifty bounce pass inside to Martin Polk Jr., and all of a sudden the comeback was on. This time Leinbach of his own accord, the junior showing off considerable float game right here and getting that to go. Then it's some defense from Linebuck. He's going to take the ball away at the top of the apex right there from Guzman and hook up at the other end with a wide open Malachi Conley who is going to can the three and the Bombers have a pulse. They're right back into this thing. Linebuck not done yet. Another use of those quick hands of his. Going to hook up right here at the other end eventually with Braden Holdhouse who will complete the offensive rebound with two. Fort Madison trying to gear the offense back up. The transition game about to go to work in this one as it's Julian Deere trying to hook up with Kendon Bowie for the big time one-handed flush slam. That won't work, but Dayton Lamar, as he usually is around the basketball to make things happen of good note. Second half of this one, Leinbach doing his thing. This time from three-point range, cans that as well, but Fort Madison has had enough of the tomfoolery. Check out Kendon Bowie just showing off how lit and athletic he is. Two really easy trips to the rim in this one, and he has got that ability to run the floor and beat everyone. Another kiss bank shot for him right here, but McComb's still not going away. Malachi Conley with the mid-range pull-up right here to keep his team within striking distance. More from Nolan Guzman, again with that defensive hustle of his and anticipation. He gets the layup at the other end, but Braden Holdhouse going to keep the Bombers alive. Three-point play the traditional way right here. McComb now down just one in the waning minutes, and Malachi Conley is going to come away with the poke away, give his team a chance under a minute to take the lead. They would do exactly that. It's Nolan Hogue on the inside completing the very important bucket and giving McComb a chance right here at the comeback victory. But Dayton Lamar at the other end with under 30 seconds left is going to finish with the nifty take right here and some defense at the other end of this by Mr. Guzman is going to close it out. 47-46, Fort Madison goes 2-0 on the day. Our final spotlight game of the day saw new coach Greg Altmix and his Q&D Raiders mix it up with the Keokuk Chiefs and right off the bat, all six foot nine of Jackson Clark making his presence felt. Three-point play the hard way for him to establish early momentum. Then check out Bodie Beagle. Speaking of guys who probably deserved a three-point play, a free throw, or at least a band-aid in this one, absolutely mugged, but still somehow gets the shot to fall. Quincy Notre Dame down, but trying to fight its way back in. No surprise here, Jace Allensworth, one of the best returning talents on the wing in our area, right in Clark's face with a little teardrop at that point. Quincy Notre Dame trying to make some things happen. Jackson Clark trying to stop them. Again, cleaning up nicely right here. The big fella on the offensive glass. And Quincy Notre Dame, nor really anybody else in the region, has much to match that kind of physicality. Still, Quincy Notre Dame got some momentum going late in the first half. Jackson Pyatt with the pull-up jumper right here. However, Mr. Pyatt would be punished for that a moment later as Clark gets the big block and then it's Pyatt's turn to punish as he comes up with the nifty larceny and the layup in this one. Quincy Notre Dame led by four at the end of the first half. All Keokuk of the second half. Jackson Clark and crew win by 10 in this one. The final count sees the Chiefs victorious 41 to 31. Reporting from Lee and Hancock County, I'm Sports Director Chris Stewart.